How would you describe the JRC's relationship um, with Israel? When the JRC was set up, um, I think many of its members sort of primarily saw it as an organisation that was about uh, domestic infrastructure, the UK Jewish community, whilst at the same time recognising the centrality of Israel to UK Jewish life. I think one of the things we've seen over the past eight or nine years is the extent to which the assault upon Israel's fundamental legitimacy is also an assault upon British Jews. When we see the boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign prevent Israeli mediators uh, fulfilling contracts for public bodies like the Manchester National Health Trust in the case of Monte Cristo, when we saw the scenario in which under the, the, the abuse of universal jurisdiction arrest warrant provision, mm -hmm. shawls and charities were unable to invite over Israeli speakers mm -hmm. that they wanted to invite over. When we see a scenario in which Jewish students on some campuses in the UK are regularly baited and in some cases bullied on the back of their support for the State of Israel, I think you know we see in an all too stark way, the extent to which British Jewish life and the standing of the State of Israel in this country are inextricably interlinked. I think we also recognise that a community whose relationship with Israel is purely based upon pushing back against the boycotters and delegitimizers is not one that's developing a healthy relationship in Israel. In fact, it, it, with Israel, it, it, it's our view that part of the aim of those who seek to delegitimize Israel is to drive a wedge between young diaspora Jews and the state of Israel. And that's one of the reasons why, as well as playing a central role in, in, in funding the vigils and the solidarity rallies that took place at critical times, like uh, the war against Hezbollah in Lebanon back in 2006, Operation Cast Lead in Gaza a few years ago, the JLC also instigated and played the primary role in funding the community's celebrations of the 60th anniversary of the State of Israel under the Salute to Israel mm -hmm. brand. We felt very strongly, and our members felt very strongly, that there are times when our community needs to come out into the streets of London and Manchester and proudly and openly show our support for the State of Israel. And we take great pride in the fact that actually that the, the parade through Piccadilly, central London, down to Trafalgar Square was the first time and remains the only time that a, a salute to Israel parade of that nature, in fact there were two, one in London, one in Manchester that took place concurrently, has ever taken place outside North America. Um, and you know, there are other ways in which this community plays a unique role in the development, continuing development of the State of Israel. You just have to to spend some time in the north of the country and look at the tremendous legacy of, of development projects um, that are a result of this community's investment in the north of Israel through the work of, of UJIA, one of our member organisations, you know, the, uh, the school and other facilities that have been built up in Shlomi, all of the other facilities and projects over the years that are a result of the tremendous philanthropic relationship between our community and the state of Israel. There, there, there are some Jewish organisations um, that I met recently at the Habiba um, demonstrations outside the Globe Theatre. There are some Jewish organisations that are very, very sympathetic to the Palestinians and perhaps would describe Israel as an apartheid state. Uh, what would you say to these um, Jewish communities that support the Palestinians and would describe Israel as an apartheid state? Well, I think there's two very different things, David. I think the fact that there are Jews who support the Palestinians should be non-contentious and non-controversial. Every mainstream political party in Israel would describe itself as supportive of the Palestinians. This is not a zero-sum game. I think that our concern and, and, and my concern would begin where organisations, be they Jewish or not, start to cross that red line into delegitimization yeah. and, and demonisation. You know, a, a, a apartheid is something very specific and very unique in you know, the history of oppression of peoples. Uh, and and you know, to be clear, there is, is no comparison between the situation in Gaza 
or in the occupied territories uh, and apartheid in South Africa and leading members of the uh, of the ANC, the body that uh, successfully fought to overturn the apartheid regime, have made that abundantly clear. Um, is the discrimination in Israel? Undoubtedly, just as there's discrimination in this country and, and most of the Western world. Um, but you know, to extrapolate from that situation and to suggest that Israel is in some way engaged in uh, promoting and sustaining an apartheid-style regime is simply uh, a calumny and an utter distortion of the facts. I, I think that those from a Jewish background or Jewish organisations such as Jews for Justice or Palestinians mm -hmm. who do make that claim mm -hmm. ultimately are in irrelevance. They're unrepresentative. They have no base within our Jewish community in this country. Many of their names and their signatories identify as Jews purely for the purposes of signing Jews for Justice for Palestinian adverts or purely for the purpose of labelling Israel an apartheid state. I don't think we should spend too much time worrying about these people. They're not representative, as I say, of any mainstream tendency or opinion grouping within our community. We should worry when the charges that they make gain traction in broader British public life and we should push back and argue vigorously against those charges. Um, so, the so, fact so, so, so. That, that, that they come from, from, from groups who, who seek to promote them on, on the back of their Jewish heritage, are, you know, I, I think is largely an irrelevance. So, so would the JLC only represent mainstream um, organisation Jewish communities then? What, what do you mean by that? Um, would the JLC only perhaps have on its membership boards mainstream Jewish communities? Yeah, I, mean, I think in order to become a member of the JLC you, you have to fulfil a number of criteria which, which essentially uh, boil down to being able to demonstrate that you, that you provide part of the infrastructure mm. or, or, or services for mainstream Jewish life in the UK. So it's, it's a self-selecting system and you know, uh, those groups on the fringes or margins of, uh, of Jewish life would will, will be exceedingly un unlikely to qualify for JLC membership. Mm -hmm. I w would say that I don't think as a community we should be afraid to engage with or, or take on the arguments of, of the type of group that you're talking about, but I also think we should be careful and cautious not to create the impression that they represent any significant grouping or that the community is in some way split down the middle. I think, you know, I mentioned Jewish Policy Research Institute earlier, a reference to the census. I think that their seminal piece of work published at the end of 2010 on British Jewish attitudes to Israel gave us some very useful data from which we can see where the vast majority of British Jews are in terms of, of, of their politics around the state of Israel and that particular debate and I think uh, you know, those results will not surprise anybody that knows our community and I think those results clearly show the kind of groups you're talking about have, have no foothold whatsoever. Mm. Um, is the JLC an elected body? Uh, partially yes, um, JLC is structured with two sort of central parts to our governance, we have a, a council of members, that is the Jewish Leadership Council, and the people who sit around that council of members are the senior lay leaders, normally the chairperson or the president of our member organisations. So Steve Pack, who you mentioned earlier, is the elected president of the United Synagogue and sits on the council in that capacity. His counterparts, the elected heads of the other synagogue bodies, sit on that council. Vivian Weinman, the elected president of the Board of Deputies, sits on that council. We have other organisations and charities who sit on the council who have, um, they don't have a direct system of and internal I, 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 democracy. I, I, Some of them have an indirect system whereby their chairs are elected or nominated or selected. Uh, and we don't get involved in the way our member organisations select or elect their leaders. We bring them together on the council and then the other element to our own internal democracy is that every three years, the members of that council 
elect our nine members of our board of trustees. So you know, we're an organisation whose agenda and democratic structures are driven by the organisations at the centre of communal life. Those organisations elect the majority of our board of trustees who are responsible for running the organisation on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's another dimension to this as well that I think is important and is often forgotten about. But you know, why do we talk about democracy? It's about having a mandate, isn't it? And many of the individuals and organisations who sit around the JLC table, the organisations who have been entrusted with the philanthropic giving of ordinary members of our community, be it people uh, putting a cord through the box on a Conidre appeal once a year, be it the people who uh, make their regular monthly direct debit donations to the uh, social care charities, or be it the people who are inspired at whatever point in, in, in their Jewish life cycle to make donations to those, those charities. And you know, it's the people who have been entrusted with that philanthropic giving who also sit at the core and the heart of the JLC. So even where they haven't been elected through a direct democratic model, I think that um, you know, they very much have a mandate from the ordinary members of our community, albeit a slightly different sort of mandate than somebody putting their hand up in a synagogue board meeting.